Alrighty, let's play this in full. Cool. I think that's pretty good. All right, so we have... I think you might be able to, to drag the tip sooner. As it goes down here, you might be able to be already higher with that tip. So that by now, you know, you would have a straighter, a straighter ball. I'm so weirdly, I'm weird at that, that this is not the ground. And then it bounces here. Pew, pew, pew. I think you could also, on this, have a slight curvature here with that tip down there. And then come back up into this all of these tiny tiny things but i think overall i like it let me just double check something just checking the spacing if the last one is suddenly really big no no Boom. cool Yeah, I think the main thing would be to drag these a bit more. Like you can go a bit low, like bend down and then come back up. And I wonder if that impact is a bit fast from here. Mainly because you go from here, it snaps down, but then doesn't continue with that momentum down. But hold on, you are mentioning in your email that you let's see here that the arc of the tail has to improve in the part when it hits the ground oh okay so you're totally aware of that so i think just keep going on those details you mentioned no squash and stretch but that's totally fine to me if you're really into it you can always put a lattice around it and then just manually go into that but i don't mind this is mainly just for for that aspect there and it's already working really well uh, and then you have other questions here let me see one of the question is how i work with overlap yeah i don't really do much with offsetting um keys so for something where you have you know all of that happening here i usually put that into the pose Unless it's a really light rig, so maybe on a bouncing ball, which to be honest, I haven't done in a while. <laughs> a bouncing ball with a tail. <coughs> Excuse me. I might go into the graph editor and and tweak it in there. But usually I pose out the the offsets and the drag overlap. And the other question is not exactly ball related. It's more uh, you're asking between auto tangents and spline. Um, you know, everybody has their own different workflow. And I usually, I mean, for this, I would use linear keys. I, again, as I've mentioned others in my q and I'm a bit silly where I have linear keys by default so that something like this happens. So you got that. But then everything else would be, you know, would be pretty crappy unless I put in a lot of keys. But I, my default is linear, so I have that. And then I just convert into spline to get into that type of motion. And then, you know, for this, I would spline it out and then uh, just work on the poses. But I might explore also offsetting the keys like you asked before. But um, to be honest, I've never worked with auto tangents. And if that works for you or if you feel like other people are doing this and you want to explore that, that's totally fine too. Because um, your question is why do most of the animators use spline tangents? I don't know, maybe it's how we were taught in school. Maybe that's I was. That's kind of my my approach, but I could obviously change at one point. But so far I'm pretty comfortable. Uh, with that and then your last question again that's not really specifically for this or anybody watching this looking for feedback again i think this is the timing's good doing 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 i think the bounces are good and i think the, the tail is good i might explore adding a frame or a frame between these so you don't have that you know, from here to here, it's not a massive change. From here to here, it's a big change. And then from here to here, it's really not a lot of a change. So I will pot potentially explore on all of these, bringing this just a bit higher 
and then here and then that so that it's a bit of a smoother impact maybe right now that tail snap is a bit sharp but just something to explore i don't think it's a shot breaker um again that's just my my general thing for you to tweak and anybody watching these are my general comments for this ball because it's already really good but your last question is um uh, you were watching Kenny Roy tutorials and a lot of people use stepped tangents versus linear. Um, again, the reason why I use linear is because we don't use step that work. I'm just so used to that workflow from linear spline, which again, I might as well use spline in this tweak some to linear. But because of working with live action plates, we can't really mix stepped keys. Um, I don't know if I would, to be honest, do stepped keys on this. Probably on a bouncing ball, I would go straight into, into those poses and spline it and, and get it all done. But for something character driven, I think stepped is, is very good. It's very important because it really focuses on clean poses and telling the story with basic poses. If someone's over here walking over there and staying there, how you know what, what are the main poses you can you can put in there to tell the story? And then you can focus on the breakdowns and in-betweens and really start sculpting away uh, and really focus on very clear silhouette and clear story telling pose i think that's cool uh, i'm not against it uh my main two things are i don't use it at work because of work constraints the way it does, won't work for clients um and the other thing is that my warning for the students is that sometimes they have someone that sits and then they stand and then in in their blocking that's their stepped process there's a key and there's a key but there's nothing in between is this person you know, jolting up to come to a stand. Is this person leaning forward slowly, you know, putting their arms on the knees to really slowly get up? Is that person first leaning backwards, putting one leg out to then get up there? There's just many, many ways of how you can get up. And there's just, there are not enough keys, uh, like breakdowns that in between with student work that you step. That's just my, my, my caveat. Now saying don't use it, I think it's really good to do. Just be mindful that you need a lot of information in between. You can fall into that trap of even if someone has an arm up, you know, and then the next pose is arm straight, to go from a bend to a straight, there are many ways how you can go from this to this. So you need more, more poses and like more breakdowns. And then what students do usually, they go from this to that, they spline it, and then it's just this crazy mess. And then they're freaking out, which I understand. So you just have to be very disciplined to put in more breakdowns. And and I would always back and forth, back and forth, spline, spline and step and spline and step to see kind of what it looks like so you don't lose your initial timing. Um, so that is my long-winded answer in video form. I could have emailed you this, but maybe people will learn from those answers or just hear a different opinion. Um, not that it's something that I need to learn, but it's just my point of view. Um, and you can always agree or disagree. And if you're watching this, you can always leave comments with any comments about anything I said. As always, I'm going to stop rambling and leave it here. Thank you for the submission. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.